Red Line is a bus rapid transit line that runs from the south side of Indianapolis through downtown up to the north side. The stations are much nicer to wait, much safer to wait in. It's a, a big improvement because of the frequency, because of the amenities of the stations, because of the convenience of paying my fare at the station and just getting on the bus. When most people think about riding the bus, you may think about, you know, bench that you're sitting on, you know, in the baking sun. What they've got here is really more of a light rail feel to the station. It's designed deliberately, you know, to be inviting and to be welcoming. We saw the market immediately recognize the value of BRT and began acquiring sites and driving up property values and building vertical. We're specifically seeking out uh, locations that are on these transit corridors because we know what development has followed those. Obviously, light rail is sexy and fun, but the, the bottom line is BRTs like this are more affordable and the cost savings that you can secure allow you to make additional investments in other infrastructure. So we're also making needed investments in sidewalk infrastructure, ADA accessible ramps, and also some beautifications as well. We built the red line for roughly $90 million. Look how long it is. If you had done this with light rail, you may have to add a zero onto that. <laughs> I grew up loving trains, and then when I moved down to Atlanta, I rode on Martyr Rail, and it was always a highlight for me. And it took me a little while to warm up to the concept of BRT. It's one of those things that once you experience it and you see what it can do for the community, you know, I think it's a really great option. I think it's really more just of a paradigm shift of people understanding what the product is and that it's not your grandparents' bus design or even the bus uh, experience of our youth. BRT is really bringing a lot of those rail-like elements, having station platforms that are level, multiple doors that you can enter and exit. Vehicles come often. They come when you need them, that it's reliable and consistent. We can drop off the girls at their daycare. I can drop off Alice at her school, and then I can also hop back on the red line and head to work. You know, many cities believe that they have to have a rail line to say, we've made it. Having a true transit network that moves the city is what counts. I was really excited to get the BRT here in, in Indy because it's a lot like riding a light rail system in the sense it's just light rail on rubber tires. One of the key features of bus rapid transit is those dedicated lanes because that is what allows the bus to be reliable and those lanes are free from other traffic. So it is so rail-like. If you look at our station that we have, it is level boarding, just like a rail car. We have real-time signs. Next northbound bus to 66th station due in one minute. It makes announcements. It does everything. The only thing it doesn't do is stay on a rail. It can go where it needs to go and we can make it adaptable to the needs of our city. There are signals that turn that allow the bus to make a left turn actually across traffic and the bus essentially can jump ahead car traffic and that's a wonderful feature here that really helps speed up the service. Just the experience of riding the electric buses are very smooth, uh, very quiet. They don't contribute to noise pollution. I ride my bike a lot so I can bring my bike onto the bus and put it on the rack inside the bus. Saves a lot of time. It's been a huge improvement in how we're able to ride the bus here in Indianapolis. The tracks and the trains alone do not make good service. What's really important is that it gets you where you need to go in a reasonable amount of time. And with bus rapid transit, you're able to do that. Operational flexibility, I think, is one of the core components to bus rapid transit. When you're operating a light rail line, you can't deviate left or right. That train has to go where that rail is located. Where bus rapid transit has the ability to flex, our city is going through a significant amount of construction processes. Well, guess what? Our bus can detour, and it can go around those construction barriers. Where a light rail is on a fixed guideway, either it's going to turn around or you're simply just not going to run that rail system during that time of construction. You know, we're more efficient and we're more adaptable to the needs of our community with the bus rapid transit line. The idea that this should be rail instead of bus just doesn't make any sense from the affordability standpoint of it, from the ability to make additional investments in infrastructure. Well, the red line was a godsend for our community, and so with transit, significant increases were made in ADA accessibility, in new sidewalk infrastructure, and in widening sidewalks. Our bus rapid transit project is, is about movement of people, not just on our buses, but within our community as a whole. So therefore, Indigo focused not just on our bus infrastructure, but the city infrastructure to connect individuals within our community to 
those bus stops. When they built the station, they improved the infrastructure around it as well. So I can very easily roll the girls on, um, hop off, roll down, and keep it and keep it moving after that. It inherently increased the safety and the pleasure of the experience of riding the bus because you're on a bollarded, protected, elevated platform and you can now catch the bus any direction from the same station. I ultimately prefer riding the bus with our girls versus driving. When we're on the bus, we can actually all engage together. I mean, I can, I can read them a story, like I can talk to them, I can ask them how their day is going, I can actually engage. Bus rapid transit helps to spear economic development. So Indigo's team worked with the city of Indianapolis to come up with a transit-orientated development policy. Therefore, we don't have storage facilities and gasoline stations that are gonna be built along our corridor, but yet and still are gonna focus on housing, workforce development opportunities, reducing parking at those facilities, and to move the city forward in a much more eco-friendly manner. The city actually realigned its entire zoning program, and so Rezone Indy paved the way with permitting and encouraging mixed-use density around transit stations. We're seeing developers get on board as well. They're making investments around those nodes to ensure uh, that this community is thriving and that economic development is soaring. In the four years preceding the construction of the Red Line, some three quarters of a billion dollars, now eclipsing a billion dollars in vertical development, has gone into housing, grocery stores, and uh, major centers of employment. What we have here is something that is being encouraged by the planning and the zoning that makes it easier and attractive uh, for developers to come here and do that sort of work. The rest of the community is also embracing the idea of transit-oriented development, finding ways to do smart development that leverages these assets, leverage these dollars uh, into making our community more connected overall. There were abandoned buildings in certain areas of our city that investors have taken over and turned into vital new businesses as well as residences. We're essentially tearing down old units that have fallen into, into disrepair and rebuilding uh, one and two bedroom apartments over retail space and it's bringing you know density and affordable housing. Affordable housing near transit is everything particularly for a low to moderate income family. 33% uh, of the members of this community don't have access to a car so they need transit. So what this does is allows people to remain in the neighborhood, move to the neighborhood and the goal here is to bring the density and the units closer to our transit stations. Bus rapid transit is really such a useful tool. You know, I think people should give it a shot. I think it's a great way for cities to deploy high quality transit service and deploy it to a much larger number of people in a shorter time frame. 